Hi, and welcome back to Awesome Knits. Today, because the weather is getting just that little bit warmer, I wanted to sit down and really have a think about some of the things I want to knit now that we're going into summer. In the past couple of years, I haven't been much of a warm weather knitter, but I'm really hoping to change that this year. And I feel like sitting down and really thinking through some of the projects I like the look of and sharing them with you all will help keep me accountable and hopefully give me that motivation to finally start a few things for the hot weather. My approach to summer knitting can be described as a sort of two-prong approach. So I'm really looking for pieces that, number one, are practical and wearable for when it's really, really warm. Because in Italy it does go up to sort of like 35 degrees on some of the hottest days, where all you want to do is sit somewhere in the shade and just melt and not move and just sip really, really cold drinks. And I need to plan my knits around that sort of crazy, crazy heat whilst also keeping in mind that I want things which are classic and will pair with a lot of things, but I also want a few things that are more romantic and just a little bit extra, you know, a bit fancy with some interesting details that really let me focus in on silhouettes that I don't see very often in knitting. So with that in mind, I am excited to introduce you to the little list I've compiled of things that I hope hope definitely in quotation marks, I'll be able to knit this summer. I've selected approximately seven or eight things because my thought behind that was May, June, July and August, four months and two projects by different designers each month because I do still want to knit my own stuff for the upcoming autumn months and I need to give myself enough time to focus on that too. So let's dive right in. Now, project number one, I already have the yarn for right behind me over here. So project number one is going to be the camisole number five by My Favourite Things Knitwear. And I'm gonna knit it up in this really pretty Knitting for Olive Nordic Beach Merino. So yeah, colour Nordic Beach and it's kind of this very sort of murky grey cream shade. It's quite an in-between sort of colour, but I think that it will pair well with a lot of things because of that. Because it isn't quite grey, but it isn't quite cream. It should go with sort of warmer shades and cooler shades. And yeah, so her pattern, camisole number five, has been all over Instagram over the last few months. And I have resisted until now the urge to cast it on. But when I got my recent yarn order and this arrived, I thought, yes, it's time. <laughs> I really like this design for a few reasons. I enjoy the sort of textured rib on the body because I think that that will give it stretchiness and it will allow it to really cling and be very flattering on my shape. But I also really like the finishing around the neckline and the sleeves because it looks very thick and like it would be quite durable, but also it makes it look very, very smart and neat. And as many of you will know, if you've watched my videos before, I really like knitwear pieces that look very polished. I like everything to have quite a clean finish and I don't like sort of rough and ready weird edges. So this ticks a lot of boxes for me. I think that it will pair really nicely with some high-waisted trousers and maybe also layered with like a linen or big oversized cotton shirt over the top. I think that that will look really quite cool and also hopefully be very, very comfy for this hot weather. I'm hoping that now I've got this yarn, I can actually start this project in the next couple of days. So look out for it in my next monthly vlog. I hope I will have made a bit of progress into it by then. And this design by My Favourite Things comes in sizes extra small to XXL. So that's a 74 centimetre to 103 centimetre bust, just for you all to keep that in mind. Okay, on to project number two, which is called Made You Dream Blouse by Ocean Knits. This is something that I also came across on Instagram and it's actually currently in testing, but I'm just so, so, so excited for it to be ready. 
Um, I noticed that it said that it would probably be out in June, so I'm hoping that I'll be able to cast that on sort of around mid-June or early July. And this is definitely one of the things that falls into the category of romantic, dreamy and really, really pretty and girly. Um, it's part of her collection of Made You tops and dresses and jumpers, which all feature this sort of medieval maiden kind of silhouette, which I just really like. It's very cute and it gives me all of those sort of cottagecore vibes. <laughs> now, I'm not sure if cottagecore is still a thing, but for me, it definitely is still a thing. And this year, after making the romantic billowy chambray sweater, I really want to lean into that because I do think that this style quite suits me and I also find it a lot of fun to be able to dress up in things which are a little bit more girly on some days and then go for the sort of like minimalist classic aesthetic on other days. Now I really like most of the designs in the Made You collection by Ocean Knits but this one stood out to me because of the ruching sort of around the body and the gathering on the top section near the bust. I think that these design elements will just make it extremely flattering on a lot of different shapes and it also just adds more of that kind of medieval flair. I don't know, it just it looks really cool and I can imagine myself wearing this maybe with shorts or jeans or maybe even over the top of a pretty floaty dress. I think a top like this really deserves to be knit up in something fuzzy and with plenty of halo and a yarn that has caught my eye for this summer. Um, and yes, knowing me, you know I had to go with a mohair, but this one, very interestingly, is a cotton mohair. Now, let me just double check the name. Let's see, Mohair Cotton by Katya. Now, I saw this and I thought, ooh, this is really interesting. So that combination of kind of warm weather cotton fibres with cold weather mohair, it could be really cool. I'll have to see if I can order some and check it out. I think it would pair really well for this and so I reckon that's what I'll do. Now a note on the sizing for this one, because it is still in testing I don't have the complete size range but she's very good with being size inclusive in her designs so I imagine that it will be, yeah, pretty good for that, very size inclusive. Pattern number three is called the Owen blouse. So that is one of the elves, the lovely elves from Lord of the Rings. And going with my kind of cottage core sort of fairy princess vibe this summer, I think that this design could be really, really sweet. And it's by a designer who I really admire called Fable Knitwear. She has her channel here on YouTube that I'll link down below. And in my last video, a lovely viewer kindly suggested that I have a look at some of her designs. And fantastic suggestion, by the way, because yeah, I really, really like um, her interesting and unique silhouettes, the sort of huge, pretty sleeves that she adds to things, and the intricate little details that she places here and there. I just think her stuff is very interesting, so I'll be looking forward to trying to cast this on hopefully in the coming months. Now the Owen blouse is quite a simple silhouette. It has three quarter length sleeves, at least in the version that I'm looking at, with the optional addition of a cute ruffle, which yeah, you know I'm going to add that ruffle. <laughs> I just think it really brings it together. and. It's knit up in a fingering weight yarn and she chooses one of her own lovely fingering weight yarns but I'll probably go for something like a cotton blend for this one I reckon. Now a note on sizing for this one, it is currently in sizes XS up to 4XL or a 145cm bust. After all the romance and the drama and the girliness of the last two options, I wanted to go back to basics and go for something very pared down that I could wear every day, maybe just like popping to the supermarket or doing whatever I want. Good for chucking on with a pair of comfy shorts and I hope that it will look just as clean and neat as hers does. And this is the Gaia Top by Morissette C. Morichette? Yeah, uh, weird pronunciation on that one, sorry for that. But this top 
is something very reminiscent to me of the petite knit anchor tee which has been around everywhere for quite a while and I feel like it's a shame that this top hasn't been picked up by a lot of knitters on social media as much as some of the petite knit ones. So I'm hoping that I can really shine a spotlight on this very talented designer. She is a French designer. Um, as some of you know, I do have a bit of a penchant for French designers. I really like them and she has some really great offerings. Now the Gaia top is a simple t-shirt shape but it has some interesting increases around the yoke and some pretty textured elements that kind of remind me a little bit of rope. So in that way, it has a little bit of a nautical vibe and sticking with that kind of nautical feeling, I think that I would maybe knit this in white or in navy. I really like hers in white. I think it looks really good. So yeah, maybe I would stick to white or cream for this one. And for this, I'm also considering checking out another Katia yarn for summer, which is the cotton cashmere, which sounds very luxurious, but hopefully good for when it gets really warm. This top knits up in a sport weight yarn and it is in sizes XXS to 3XL or 72 centimeter bust to 128 centimeters. This next design is another t-shirt design with a detailed yoke that just really, really caught my eye. For this one, I was well and truly knitfluenced, <laughs> if that's a proper word, by a beautiful Instagrammer called Caroline Mathilde. And she does a lot of sort of modeling for some pattern designers that I really, really admire. And yeah, this was one of the tops that she modelled for a designer with quite a long and intimidating sounding name that I will pop in right down below. And this is the Peacock Top. The thing that really stood out to me about this design and really all of this designer's collection were the very intricate yokes that she creates using kind of lacy details that are just quite beautiful to look at. They look extremely complex, but I'm hoping that I'll rise to the challenge and be able to recreate something that just looks very pretty and sort of refined and elegant. Something that I enjoy about this is that long sort of textured yoke section does create this illusion of lengthening this part of the body. So it sort of lengthens your neck and kind of makes everything look a little bit more long and more elegant. I really like that. Um, I am somebody who enjoys wearing quite high neck things, not necessarily turtlenecks, but just necks that come up like that, because I do think that they create this swoop effect that can just look really, really good. Now this top is knit up in a worsted weight linen yarn. I don't think I'll be able to get my hands on this one by San Nizgarn just because it isn't sold so easily around where I am. I don't think it was in one of the yarn shops that I visited a few months back, but I'll have to double check their website. But yeah, if you have any recommendations for summery yarns, linens and cottons especially, that are extra soft and extra comfy to wear, do drop them down below. I'm especially looking for a worsted weight, cotton or linen, just because there are two tops on this that both use that. But I will say my last experience with linen was a little bit odd. I did find it a challenge to work with because it was almost like knitting with twine or something. Not that it was really, really scratchy, but it was just very firm. There's no give and sort of comforting squishiness like there is with wool but I do think that that's just something I kind of need to get past and get over and really dive into knitting with um, plant fibres instead of animal fibres as well. So this beautiful peacock top comes in sizes extra small to XXL and you can find the exact um, bust measurements and details about sizing on her website which I'll link down below. Talking about worsted weight linen yarn, this top is also designed in a similar yarn to the last one. I think that one of the recommendations for this top is actually that San Nizgarn linen yarn in worsted weight. Um, and this is one of the most perfect basic tops that I've come across on Ravelry. And it is called the Thea Top by Paula Strict. 
who is a German designer, that if you haven't seen her stuff, she makes the most beautiful, minimalist, chic pieces. I mean, everything looks like you could have bought it at a nice shop. I really appreciate the amount of effort that she puts into the design and construction of a lot of her tops. Now the Thea top is quite a simple tank top silhouette, but it has this really nice sort of scoop neck that I think will be quite flattering on a lot of people and it will allow you to feel like you're getting a little bit of sun on your skin. I think that this, just like the My Favourite Things camisole, will pair really nicely with a good oversized shirt over the top and, I don't know, maybe some comfy baggy cool trousers. As much as I enjoy the neckline, I would say one of the star features of this piece are the nice thick straps because, as I've mentioned in a previous video, I am a fan of bra friendly straps, I like somewhere to hide them and this top has you covered with that. When I imagine myself knitting this top, I like the fact that it doesn't look like it's going to take a lot of yarn, so it seems like a good option for those of you who want something quick, a project that you can kind of grab, pop into your handbag and take out with you to knit outside while you're enjoying some of the sunshine. The fact that the design also features large sections of stockinette will also help you have that nice, easy, mindless piece that you can just kind of breeze through without having to think too much about. This Thea top comes in one, two, three, four, five sizes, so a small up to an XXL, so not quite as wide of a size range as some of the other designs, but still a lovely option for people who fancy it. I feel like no knitting plans video of mine would be complete without a couple of free patterns. And I've got you covered with another design by Paula Strict, and this is the Ada bag, which is definitely a perfect looking market bag. I think that this will be a great one to keep inside your handbag, so if you want to pop quickly into the supermarket and you want to fill it up, like she has in her picture, with loads of citrus fruits um, and still look very stylish doing it, this is the perfect accessory for you. Now, one thing to note about this is it is technically a crochet project. And yes, I did sneak in a crochet project here because I really, really want to try and learn to crochet properly. I've told my mum that she can try and teach me and I am committing to this summer finally learning to crochet because especially for the warm weather, there are just so many beautiful crochet projects that are popping up at the moment. I do feel like when it comes to winter, um, knitting is just completely the thing. I mean, there are so many knitting designs. I probably wouldn't think about crocheting as much for cold weather, but in the summer, crochet looks very cute. I think that a lot of the little top designs or bags and hats that are crocheted could go really, really well for when it's nice and sunny outside. So yeah, whether you're an experienced crocheter or you want to try it out like me, do give this pattern a little look. It is free and it just looks really, really cute. To round off this spring and summer knitting plans video, I also wanted to share one last free pattern, which is one that I have been looking at for ages for a gift knit for my dad. And this is the Shetland scarf by Leslie Weber. Now this scarf, it's really quite amazing that this pattern is up on Ravelry for free because it looks extremely complex in its color work design and I just think it's the perfect chance for me to use up some of my stash yarn in some of these colors that I know that my dad really likes. My dad, like me, um, really enjoys this shade of blue. So it's almost like a cobalt type blue. And I think that it will go very well with the biscuity shades and cream colored yarn that I have in my stash. This is all fairly toothy fingering weight yarn. So I'm hoping when it knits up, it will look all quite fuzzy and uniform and like one really soft fabric. I really enjoy this sort of traditional fair aisle with a lot of different colours for men. I think it looks very cool and very retro and I personally can really see this scarf on him and I reckon this might be, even though I said I'm going to stick to monogamous knitting, this might be a project that I kind of work on in stages in the background while I'm working on things for myself just because his birthday is in August, 
so I do still have quite a bit of time to get it finished and it looks like I might need it because it's definitely going to be one of the most ambitious colour work projects I've ever tried. And with that we have come to the end of my spring and summer knitting project plans. I will also have some of my own designs going on at the same time which I'm keeping a little bit more secret because I still have to finalise a few ideas on but I'm really looking forward to diving headfirst into some of these more summery knits. And if you do have any suggestions about yarns for the summer, do drop them down below because I am quite new to making stuff with plant fibres especially, so I love to hear your wonderful advice and I look forward to seeing what you suggest. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!